Today, we're going to talk about something called music trackers. What's a music tracker, you ask? It's actually a type of music making software that instead of going along, like things like Logic and Cubase and stuff like that, it goes down. <laughs> So to start with, these music trackers have been around since the late 1980s and now any sort of popular computer between then and now, you could probably get a music tracker on it. My first experiences of music trackers were actually with Game Boys and the amazing music tracker that is called LSDJ. You could put it on a cart, you pop it in and it turns your Game Boy into a music making monster. I actually touched on LSDJ on a previous video of how to use it to control a synth. Have a look at that video if you want. There's plenty of them. You can get them on Commodore 64s. There's absolutely loads of trackers to choose from for things like the Atari ST, because of course you've got one. These include trackers like Maximizer, and these actually control the sounds that are created by the actual computer. So if you've got one of these lying around, get a USB to floppy drive and give them a go. I fell in love with LSDJ because you could make a proper gnarly, you know, 8-bit sound. There's different pages which go further and further into the time frame. So you've got a main sequencing page, then you've got a pattern page, then you can keep on going further and further into tables, then you've got instrument patches. It's really quite an interesting way of making music. But now, lo and behold, the Noid Sequencer. It's the tracker for modular synths. It's loosely based on LSDJ for the Game Boy, but broken out and it's just a hell of a lot more powerful and larger. It's got six CV trigger and mod channels, and then you've also got two sample channels. So it's got a sampler in there as well. It's got some record commands in there and stuff. You can literally have a whole set of scenes that you're selecting between and, you know, whilst making other scenes at the same time. Trackers are usually made to compose and make a song and well thought out, which is what you can do on here. But I thought it would be interesting to see how far you could get in 5 minutes or 10 minutes. I'm not touching in this video on the recording functions or the sampler or all of the clocks and all the other random stuff. So yeah, I'm going to go and give this nerd sequencer a go. Okay, I've got the camera in front of me, it's not ideal, but I'm gonna do it anyway. In case we get as far as drums, I've got some here. I've got the Future Retro Transient, Diggy's Taiko by ALM, and then over here we've got the DIY synth that's gonna do the synth voices. So I'm gonna turn this on. Let the load up screen happen, I'm not gonna time that now. Oh God. How much am I gonna get done? I really don't know. I've had about two hours with this, maybe three, so it's completely, you know, this is only gonna skim the surface of what this thing is capable of, but you can see, like, what can happen. So let's press start. Okay, let's go. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna start by doing a bass line. Uh, let's go to A1, and then like, trigger one, and then, oh, shit. And then I'm gonna copy this. And yeah, and then uh, and then copy it down, which is that I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then really quick, so I'm gonna make a 16 bar loop and then add the stop command so that makes it reset at the top. And then let's press start. Change up some of the sounds, change up some of the notes, and then maybe add, let's get that one going up higher, but then add a glide. Yeah. And then maybe extend the actual, oh, wrong way. Yeah. The actual first line is how long the actual trigger is, and then the actual third one is how many times it's gonna play that note, so it's a ratcheting. But let's not do that, talk about that because we'll literally run out of time. Uh, I'm gonna add, on this line, I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a really quick, like, uh, uh, I'm gonna add a, how many bar loop? I'm gonna do that, and then, uh, oh god. Okay, okay, and then, C. Yeah, it's great. Um, my, ah, ah, oh, do. oh yeah, down. Let's get um, let's get a table in there. So basically, what a table is is it's a smaller it's a smaller pattern grid. So I'm going to go over to this. Uh, let's get. Um, uh, I'm just whacking loads of random stuff. 
so yeah there so we got that take it back there so we got that I'm gonna slow these ones down speed that one up yeah all right I'm gonna get some butt drums in there really quick we're halfway there so um, okay right new table new table right um so I don't need to worry about the actual notes even though you could use the actual notes to make a um, make another modulation source but for this one I'm gonna add some modulation and then I'm gonna uh, let's make this that long screw it let's uh, go crazy uh, right press start and now I'm gonna plug in a drum really quick oh my god oh my god oh my god all right dinky's taiko dinky's taiko it's going in, it's going in, it's getting triggered. Oh, it's brilliant. But you can notice, I can have both. This one, I go like. But then I put a modulation source, plug the mod out into the actual mix of the drums. Yeah! Okay, okay, screw it, we got that, we got that, now I'm gonna... Ah, 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 just gonna add some hi-hats, hi-hats, really quick. Right, here we go, hi-hats are turned, plugged up. Right, hi-hats, get in, get that coming out again as well. Hard and press start. And then that should start straight away. It's gonna come in soon. And then I'm gonna add really quick, like um, another bass line. Uh, but let's just uh, let's try something different here. I'm gonna go for a complete uh, note change here. Right, so this one I'm gonna do so. Oh, oh screw it, screw it, I'm just gonna keep on going. Right, let's go over to this one now, really quick, really quick. Alright, um, new one here, let's just keep on going, screw it. Uh, A down to A, G, N, N, I'm just trying to keep it in a nice major for now, just so I don't accidentally make a uh, random thing that's completely out. Yeah! And then let's go back over to the drums because everybody likes drums. Let's look uh, really quick, really quick. Oh my god, um, I'm gonna swap these around. I don't actually know how to do that on it. I'm gonna actually add some probability. So this is actually the effect slow levels. Uh, I'm gonna go over to probability of trigger pad change that up, make the trigger happen at different times. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna copy that and then... Let's start that one again. Yeah! Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about! It's getting hot here, it's getting all, you know, sketchy. I don't know whether, I don't know what to do. Right, so I'm gonna try it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna select this one again. And these come in after the bar's finished. So I, right, we got it. I've extended it a couple of uh, minutes, but you know, you really get, you really can get like um, 
really crazy things if you like mess around but this is merely skimming the surface of what this thing can do right i'm going to quickly add another another thing really quick which is actually going to be the right so i'm going to go for like ffe and then trigger zero Mark. Boop, boop. and then like if you go like doo, 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 doo. but this is going to be for the future retro machine so this is going to actually like make some different sounds add these to it as well press start on this bad boy and then yeah yeah it's playing right so i've just got to kick it out now is actually in choosing the different samples. And then I'm going to go back up. And then I'm going to start these ones again. Check the actual probability of the triggers. Yeah. There's like loads of things you can do with it and that is literally just scratching the surface. This is really basic way of using it. So yeah, that was a nerd sequencer. I'm not very well practiced at it, as you can tell, but you can kind of see how you would make a song or a whole set with it. The other cool thing is there's a lot of expansion modules that are being planned. This one has got a MIDI in and a MIDI out and also a games controller. So you don't need to sit there with your fingers on the buttons. You can use the controller. It uses Sega controllers, which I haven't got yet, but I'm on the hunt, so I'm gonna give it a go. If you find this way of making music quite interesting, have a look at it, or even if you know how to use LSDJ on the Game Boy or any other tracker, and you like the way that you make music on it, then I would definitely recommend having a look at it. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. Also, please check out my Patreon because I'm trying to make more time to build more crazy instruments and shoot more videos. Like last week's 100 oscillator synthesizer, then please think about supporting because then I could make one of those things every week. Who knows?